Well, my very, very, very first experiences were when I was probably six or seven years old. My mother had a Kodak Instamatic, um, and I took pictures with that obsessively. And then my uncle was a photographer for the New York Times. His name's Joseph Kugielski. So when I was around, I guess, 10 or 11, he gave me my first real camera, which is a Nikon F. Um, it had been his sort of like go-to camera for a very long time. So he gave me a Nikon F and it was, I, it was, I was 11 years old and it was probably way too much of a camera for an 11 year old. So I started shooting with that and my first two rolls came back completely black because I didn't understand about metering. For my birthday, I got a light meter and I finally figured out how to you know, like shoot and not have rolls of film come, black, come back black. I would save up money to buy film um, because film was expensive. You know, when you're 14 years old and you don't have a job. So I'd save up to buy film. Uh, and then I started working in a dark room. And that was when, to me, like, it all changed. Like, when I started, like, processing my own film and printing my own film, that was when I, like, my true obsession with photography started. You know, when it was like a hands-on experience from start to finish. When I was really young, like, you know, 13, 14, 15, I think I just sort of took pictures of strange things that appealed to me. Um, one of my, <laughs> I remember when I was around 15 years old, one of my favorite pictures, because I was really inspired by the Dadaists and the Surrealists mm -hmm. when I was a teenager, was so I, I, it still, it stands up as a pretty good picture. I took a big bunch of bananas and put them in a toilet, so they're coming out of the toilet, and then put a light behind the toilet. So it sort of looks like this strange, I mean, yeah, and actually like, I guess in hindsight, so maybe a little surprisingly sophisticated for a 15 year old. My interest was always taking pictures of things that seemed strange or odd. From an early age, I sort of understood that, you know, the last 170 years of photography, the beautiful stuff, has been photographed a lot. And I sort of felt like, you know what? There are so many incredibly talented photographers taking pictures of mountains and sunsets and puppies and beautiful people. And, and I was like, they, they know what they're doing. I'm gonna go take pictures of strange things that no one else is gonna take pictures of. And I think that still sort of informs my ethos as a photographer is like to look at the world and try and figure out either what, what can I take a picture of that other people might not have access to or what can I take a picture of that's ignored? Like especially like in this book, Destroyed, that I put out, like a lot of the pictures are spaces, like almost like interstitial, in, like spaces that people would walk through that normally would be ignored. From a really early age, there was always that sort of impetus to, to look at the world in an aesthetically critical way. You know, to like, to, to look from a compositional perspective. And so now, it's, I, I almost don't know how to not shoot formally, you know. And I still shoot, like I have friends who are digital photographers who will go out and shoot a thousand pictures a day, mm -hmm. you know, hoping to get one good one. I still shoot like someone who grew up saving up money to buy film and processing his own film. Like if I go out and shoot something, I'll shoot maybe 10 pictures a day because that's how I grew up. I think, I think about it quite a lot before taking the picture and then while I'm taking the picture, um, I don't think there's a better or worse approach, but clearly there's, like friends of mine who grew up only shooting digitally, there were never any financial consequences to shooting, right. so they just keep shooting. Whereas I grew up, you know, shooting film in the 70s, when I couldn't afford the film, I couldn't afford the chemicals, I couldn't afford the paper, so I still shoot very, 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 very sparingly, which probably, maybe it might even be to the detriment of the work, I don't know. I love my digital cameras, uh -huh. and I sometimes miss film. What I miss with film was like that magical alchemy of, and the delayed gratification. You know, I would shoot something on a Thursday, mm -hmm. and then on the following Monday, I would open up the film and develop the film, and then, you know, look at the negative, and you'd be like, okay, I got something. But it wasn't until you actually printed it, you know, like, so the RC paper is floating in, in it, and all of a sudden the image appears, and it's so much after the fact than the image was actually taken, you know. So digital 
photography is great for immediate gratification and understanding immediately what you've documented. But film, it did have that sort of magical, like that long period of time between when the image was captured and when you actually see it represented in front of you. When we experience a moment, there's so many variables contributing to our experience of that moment. You know, whether it's like right now, temperature, sound, smell, temporal context, you know, like what was going on five minutes ago. And all these things contribute to our experience of a moment and photography gets rid of all of them. And it just t captures that moment and there's no sound, there's no smell, there's no taste, there, there are physical, we don't know what the temperature is. All we know is that two dimensional representation of a moment. And it's fat, I, I think that's, it's just so fascinating that that, that it's this, you know, of all the art forms, it's, in some ways it's the most decontextualized because it only represents the, you know, the visual two-dimensional aesthetic aspect of an experience. A friend of mine described it once, he's like, when you're 17, the fun is here and the consequences are here. And then as you get older, they pass each other. And then, so it was like around mid forties, suddenly I realized the fun was down here and the consequences were so over the top. I was like, I just have to stop. <laughs>